The objective of this video is to apply several styles such as font family, font size, italics, etc. to an HTML file. So you first think right share right away, what are the three main sources of style information from a cascade? Remember CSS stands for cascading style sheets. So the first one is the style sheet is created by the author of the page. The second one is the browser's default styles. And then there are styles specified by the user. So one concept to better understand this relationship is inheritance. Inheritance refers to the way properties flow through the page. A child element will usually take on the characteristics of the parent unless otherwise defined. The best way to remember this is whatever came last will be used. So what is inheritance in your own words? So one way you can control style is through the font family property, which specifies the font of an element. So, so there are two types of font family names. You have font family, a specific font family, like Times New Roman or Arial. And then you'll have a generic family. So that's a group of font families with a similar look, uh, like serif or monospace. So the way you work with these families is you separate each value with a comma to indicate that they are alternatives. So if the name of a font family is more than one word, it must be in quotation marks, such as this. But if you want a second choice in terms of font, you could put a comma and then add another option. So here's an example of what it would look like. P dot serif, that means the P tag will receive the serif font. And in the case that serif is not available, you have the Times New Roman as a backup. The font family property should hold several font names as fallbacks. When specifying a web font in a CSS style, add more than one font name in order to avoid unexpected behaviors. If the client computer for some reason doesn't have the one you choose, it'll try the next one. All right, so now we're going to go to your web ed repository in GitHub and add any of the information from this video presentation to the website you want. So if you want to change the font, go ahead and do that right away. Right here, I'm going to show you how to create that separate file for your CSS. And then we're going to jump on Solo Learn and use some of the things it talks about on that website in our WebEd repository. So the great thing about using Solo Learn is you can constantly copy things and paste them into your GitHub. So go ahead and highlight this and copy it, then jump over to the GitHub in your WebEd repository. We'll create a new index.html file. And if you don't already have the code here, inside the head tag you're going to put link rel equals style sheet and then a reference to the style sheet. This is an external source of CSS for your file right here, your index.html file. Okay, so once you're back here, you're going to create a new file and this one will be named main.css. And you don't have to do anything really special here. This is what the code looks like. So, so far I'm going to color the font white and then I'm going to have the background gray. And seeing how I just learned about fonts, let me add a font now. So fa font dash family. All right, so I'm not going to be original at all. I'm just going to put Times New Roman. Let's go down and save it. Go to settings to get the link and check it out. All right, so when I first tried this, um, it was not working. I had to go to Code Playground right here and experiment and figure out what I was doing wrong. It turns out I was simply missing a space. So once I went back here, I fixed it. And now when I refresh, I can see the colors. And don't be frustrated if it doesn't work right away. Uh, lean heavily on Code Playground here. And when you post your link, in your canvas. I'll go ahead and click on it and see the code for myself so I can always go to your GitHub account and check out the repository and maybe push in and help you if you're if you're stuck. So don't worry if it's not working right away. Just be patient. It's part of programming and web designing in general is patience. You have to have great patience people. So at this point in class, you're going to continue to go through your solo learn lessons on CSS and every time you learn something new, go ahead and jump to your web ed website and try it out. So for example, I see I could change the font size here. So let me jump over here, go to main.css. All right, now I can edit it. So I'm going to jump over and double check the details. It's going to be a font dash size and then a colon. Then I click back, 
I'm going to go through the lesson. Then I'm going to learn something new. Here's a div ID. I'll jump to the GitHub account. Go down and save this. Go to index.html. So I'm putting the right type of code in the right area. So you're getting a preview of file management here. That's an important concept for us to learn. So right there in the body tag, I just pasted the div element ID as intro. Now I'm jumping back to my main.css so I can add this new ID called intro. All right, so there that is, just pasted and changed to a color I like more. And so basically, you'll just go through this module two, doing the same thing, and when you get to that quiz, at the end, just take it, and then we're going to have an IB question for you to choose from. So any of these, and your DOL is just to get to that module two quiz in Solo Learn. Then you're done for the day.